In this one, we're going to cover acceleration in Splunk, and we're also going to cover a critical command, tstats. But it would kind of be pointless to just jump off and start showing you tstats off the bat without first understanding how acceleration can be invoked, and then we will definitely get into tstats and why it's more powerful, faster than regular stats function. And to do that, like I said, we're going to cover acceleration first. Acceleration in Splunk can be implemented in one of three ways. Acceleration of reports, summary indexing, and the acceleration of data models. And the acceleration of data models will probably always be your best bet. Someone please try and prove me wrong. So starting with report acceleration, when you accelerate a report, Splunk software runs in the background a process that then builds a summary based on the results returned by that report. When you run the search, it runs against the summary rather than the full index. Because this summary is smaller than the full index and contains pre-computed summary data relevant to what that search was, the search should complete much quicker than it did when you first ran it. Let me just show you what I mean. First, in order to qualify for acceleration, it has to be including a transforming command. We can go to settings, searches, reports, and alerts, and take a look at a few examples. So if we open one that doesn't have a transforming command, like the Wireshark one here, we can click edit and notice that there is no option to accelerate it. That means that this search is not formatted and it's not meeting the criteria to become accelerated. As you can see, there are no transforming commands present in that search. But if we go back and we click on one that does have a transforming search in it, we can see the edit acceleration and edit summary index button are present. We will open this one in a new tab, run it, and see that the transforming command present is stats. So we can go ahead and click edit and edit the acceleration. This is just a checkbox saying I'm going to accelerate the report and the summary range. When you set your summary range, this is the specific length and time that you want the data to be accelerated. Then your report will run as accelerated and it will become more efficient. So you can just set the day here. But for now, I'm just going to leave it as is and press cancel. We'll come back to that later. So that kind of covers report acceleration in a nutshell. It's very simple. And if it fits your use case, go ahead and do it. Next, we will move into the second way to accelerate in Splunk, which is summary indexing. Honestly, I'm not a fan of this method as it kind of just gets like index inception, as you'll see, but a lot of people actually do use it and find it very relevant and very helpful for the use cases. So clearly I'm missing something major here, but I usually just roll with creating um, a, an accelerated data model and leveraging tstats. But I would be remiss if I didn't cover summary indexing as well because I've seen I've seen so many people use it in the past, so we can dive in. Basically, what you do with summary indexing is you build your normal search and then you can output those results to another index using the collect command. And when you do that, you're going to output that search results and you're going to collect it into another index. That other index is going to be your summary index. You have to create that summary index call it summary underscore whatever you're summarizing or what you'll remember. And then you can use that index to search against. And that is the name summary indexing. And it will only contain the other small sets of data results that you are sending to it with the collect command. So, you know, air quotes, I'm doing faster. It, summary indexing is faster because there's less data to search um, because it's already being searched by that primary search from the other main index in the original search you built. But let me stop trying to explain it with words and let's just show it in the demo. Actually, a good use case for this is to change your dashboard panels if you find that your dashboard panels are starting to run slow. So we're actually going to do it for that use case. So I'm going to find a dashboard to edit. I'll go into my dashboards and home dash. I'll just work with that one. That's fine. We can click into it and this is what we would do to find information about our log levels and executables running. So here you would put in what log level you want information on and it would pass the token to the first panel. Let's not work with the token panel. Let's work with the second panel for executables. So this is a output of all the executables that are running 
and you can click into it and view the events related to them. But let's go ahead and open it in a search. Here we can see it already has a transforming command of stats that we covered earlier, and it outputs all of my executables running on my computer for whatever my time picker, all time. So we're going to do, as I mentioned before, is and send this to a new index that we had created that will act as our summary index. So I'm going to a pipe, collect, and then the index that I've previously created. So you will have to create a new index that was going to act that is going to act as your summary index before you do this. I called it summary underscore executables. We can go ahead and run this. And by running this, it now takes the results of those events and sends them to that new summary index of summary executables. So now that index has become populated with the events that were generated from our original search. And if we wanted to take a look, notice we have almost 400,000 events here. We can copy this and search on this index that we just created. Paste it in. Search over 24 hours because I just populated that index. And boom, it cuts it down to 189 events, only the ones that are applicable to executables running on my machine. So summary index searches run faster because they're searching a smaller data set. And that one just narrows down the results based off what you decide to send to it. You can go back to the main search here. And I'm going to copy this. And if this is something that you're going to want to do, then you're also going to want to cover the SI command family. And one of the commands that we have is SI stats, probably the most common one that you will use. This just takes it to the next level of the normal stats command. And now you have the summary indexing SI version of stats. So the command knows to pick it up and work with the, and it knows it's working with a summary index set of data. So it will go even faster than if you were to do it with regular stats. We can take a look at the time that this search took to run. And it's 0.432 seconds. And if we go back into our search and reports and we edit our first search, now bear with me. This is where people get very confused. We have a scheduled search that's set to run acting as a report. This right here is the parent command. What we want to do with this parent search, parent, parent set of uh, parameters that we are giving Splunk, is send it to keep running on our cron schedule or however often we have it set, but also collect it to our new summary index. We don't want to change this command here to our index equals summary underscore executables because that will not be querying the actual data set that we need from our correct parent indexes. I'll show you where to put the index equals summaries underscore executables in a moment. But when you're editing the current search, you're only going to add the collect command at the end because we still need to generate that new data that's coming in from our data sources from those indexes that's relevant to your Splunk environment. So when editing the search, we're only going to put in the pipe collect index and the summary index that we want to send it to. This will now run on a cron and that cron will run this search and that search will populate that summary index over time. Go ahead and save it. It's accelerated. Now we go back to our command that we created to query our summary index. We can copy this, go back to our dashboard and edit. And then the search we're going to tell our dashboard to make it more, more efficient and run faster is if we edit the search, we're now going to take this parent command that we, that is used to run the scheduled search or the cron and populate that dashboard. We're now going to pull that out and input our new command that we built with our summary index. So we will copy this one and paste it into the dashboard panel. This is critical because if you do have dashboard panels that are taking forever to populate, summary indexing can be very useful in this really niche use case. So I'll paste in our new search that's only querying that smaller data set in the summary index and save it off. Now that dashboard panel is going to be wicked fast. Go ahead and save it. 
And you can do this to as many dashboard panels that would fit your use case or any kind of data source that needs to run faster or any panels that are just acting slow. If we open this in a search now, you can see we are now leveraging our summary indexing to generate our results for our dashboard panel. That's uh, summary indexing. Sorry for that headache, but a lot of people get confused on which one needs to go where. And as long as you think about what the command is doing and where your actual data is getting inputted to during ingest to what index, you should be able to keep it straight just fine. Let me go ahead and clean some of this up and we will move into our last way to invoke acceleration in Splunk, which is leveraging a data model. And so far, if I would rank report acceleration, I would put it above the summary indexing option, but if you can leverage summary indexing in this way, maybe I would put it above report acceleration. It all kind of depends. But like I said, I, I'm going to rank data model acceleration as number one. So we can go ahead and get into that and cover the tstats command. So there are two types of acceleration you can do with data models, ad hoc and persistent. Ad hoc means you are using the pivot editor and it's temporary and it's only usable with pivot. So that's about all the time I'm going to spend talking about the ad hoc way to invoke acceleration with data models. Next up, we have the persistent way. This is where tstats can be used. And this makes it so that there are specific summaries of multiple TSIDX files that are being leveraged to optimize speed. TSIDX files stands for time series index files. So let's get into some examples of persistent data model acceleration. And of course, you gotta be admin to accelerate it or at least have the permission granted to you to accelerate your data models. Go back into uh, search and reporting. All right, and we're gonna head over to the index of web. Nah, I'm just joking. <laughs> uh, that's terrible. All right, we can go into settings, data models. And I think for this one, I'm going to pick on the authentication data model. And here we have our breakdown of the data model and the components to it. If we scroll to the bottom, these are the fields that I'm going to be working with. When you run an acceleration, Splunk will build an acceleration summary based on the range that you set. So what does this mean? It means that the range of the data, it will take on a new form of TSIDX files and crank up your search speeds. When you have your index of data, there are only two parts to that index. The first part is the raw data files, and the second part is the TSIDX files. So when you accelerate a data model in Splunk, you tell it to basically ignore searching of all that bulky raw data in the index and only search those TSIDX files that are in there. And they're a lot smaller, and I'm not gonna get into the granularity of how they differ and how they're leveraged and how Splunk knows to search them, but just push the I believe button there, and believe me when I say when you're using acceleration, it's only gonna leverage your TSIDX files. And when you leverage TSTATs, that will be performing those statistical queries on your TSIDX files. And as a side note, the tstats command is most commonly used with Splunk Enterprise Security. So that's pretty much for all your SOC analysts out there, because anytime we are creating a new correlation search to trigger a notable event, we want to first consider if we can utilize the tstats command, because we would want those searches that are leveraging detections in the SOC to be as fast as possible so that there is no delay for the analyst triaging those searches. I'm going to take app, action, destination, and user. So now that I know what fields I'm going to use to search, I can start populating out my tstats command leveraging the data model. So I'll keep that open for reference and I'll pop open a new tab and start building it out. So I'm gonna start with tstats and then I'm just gonna values out some of those leveraged fields. So I'm gonna start with authentication, that's the name of the data model, and then the field of app. And I'll call it source application. I'm also going to pull authentication.action and I'll leave it as action. Just make sure it's the correct field here. Parent authentication dot app. Yep. Dot action. Okay. So I think I got it. Authentication dot action. I'm just going to call it action. I 
Notice my colors are not popping up, so I've definitely typed something wrong here. I forgot a double quote. Whoops. Okay. Call it action. And I will take destination. As I'll just leave it dust. From, and I will count from the data model of authentication. And I'm going to do it by user. So authentication.user. All right, we can go ahead and run this. And I'll just do it over the past month. That was my dog sneezing. And I would expect to only see me. So this one, number eight, Lux internal unknown only makes me a little bit nervous and I have no populating values for source application. So definitely spelled something wrong. There's no T, man. Gotta have the T, live for it. Okay, rerun it and we see, okay, yeah, it's an internal application that I have, but let's say I didn't have that field populate and I saw unknown and I was super paranoid. Um, Let's just go ahead and investigate those two counts there. So unknown application, I'm just going to copy this because I'm lazy and I'll open it up in a new tab and I'll say from data model authentication because those are where the events are populating from. And I will do just a search and give it the app, copy pasta. And user was unknown. So user equals unknown. And I'll run this over all time. Well, 30 days. And let's see what we get. Yes, that is my internal app. From my own laptop. Okay, well, I just wanted to dive in because... Didn't know what that was. So clearly my own uh, app of Splunk instrumentation, the built-in app is, is doing something here. Okay, we can move on.